Hello everyone, so Frédéric, really pleased to be here with you today uh, so to, to share with you our 2023 uh, roadmap for 5G solution. Uh, but before getting into solution, uh, let me explain you where we stand today in the industry ecosystem. And let me share with you the, um, the 5G landscape in which we are evolving today. First of all, we need to, to understand that the 5G standalone solution is a lever for which we can work on innovative solutions to provide a brand new voice and data roaming uh, experience. So the roaming ecosystem in which we are evolving is, uh, is composed of several actors. The first one and the main one is still roaming business with people, but we need to know and to acknowledge that we have to face with um, brand new machines, devices, internet of things with a quality of service requirement. So that's the fourth part of the ecosystem the second one, of course, is the operators. You among, uh, among us, so as a mobile <coughs> operators and VNO, rolling out a 5G core network, but also sh shutting down 2G and 3G network. And we have a rising star in the, st in the room, I would say, it's a mobile uh, private network, which are dedicated for corporate sectors, uh, like uh, transport, manufacturing, hospital, airport, port, energy, and um, governmental instances which are coming um, live today. So we have this uh, brand new um, ecosystem which is quite complex to apprehend. We have also to bear in mind that we need to convey roaming voice services through 4G uh, VoLT and 5G voice venue radio uh, solution. So that's the ecosystem of roaming landscape in which we are evolving. So to give you an overview of the new use cases, there is three main blocks to bear in mind. The first one is called uh, the enhanced mobile broadband. So that's the first use case where you could have, of course, very high speed connectivity on uh, urban location. So that's the first use case. The second one is called ultra, reli uh, ultra um, reliable low latency communication which will uh, avoid you to, to spend many um, uh, high latency, but you will get through it low latency in the network. And thanks to that, with the ultra low latency uh, communication tag, you could provide, for example, remote surgery, you could have uh, virtual reality, you could have a uh, smart grid, which could be provided thanks to that. The third main block is dedicated to what we call massive machine type communication, uh, which is mainly the IoT uh, devices management. Here we are standing on the three uh, new use cases I described to you. So you see the uh, massive uh, mobile type communication, which is the IoT devices I was explaining to you, for which we could have uh, smart cities, smart factories, and of course smart agriculture use cases. So where do we stand today? in terms of uh, 5G rollout in the industry. So most of us, uh, we have already deployed a 5G non-standalone solution, which is an efficient way to have a quick rollout of our 5G uh, solution, but relying on 4G core network. This is great, it goes fast, but we have limited virtualization. We've got no slicing, and I would say poor performance uh, improvement. So. The solution indeed is to move and to make the move to 5G standalone. And the 5G standalone relies on 5G core networks that will unlock the slicing and provide you low latency. So I guess you all understood that moving from 5G non SA to 5G standalone solution is a must, but it's quite complex to apprehend. And we are very proud at Orange as a leading inspiring provider to share with you the solution we have uh, designed uh, because we rely on Orange Group expertise, on Orange innovation, but last but not least, on our 26 mobile operation in Europe, Africa, and Middle East. So, in a nutshell, I think you understood the market drivers that are very important. I think that the 5G standalone will provide uh, roaming business simplification. We need also to take care about security and quality of service management. Operators will face many challenges 
uh, we have to take care about new protocols, new security certificate, new test and roaming, new BC services for billing and charging evolution, low latency, and full uh, new 5G core network. So what is Orange Value Proposal on market? It's really to focus on four pillars of our strategy. The first one, and the first pillar of the portfolio, is really the 5G SS signaling offer, which will allow you to have uh, hosted SEP management within our core network. So we have a lab running. We are welcoming you to test end-to-end -end performance through this lab. But we will deploy the 5G signaling offer as the first uh, key element of the value proposal in H223. Then we have, of course, the 5G open roaming hub, which will allow you the outsourcing of your roaming um, management with BC services that will be in place. Third one is the routing packet gateway management through IPX regional breakout. And last but not least, we've got the 5G core network as a service, which is allowing, allowing you to have a cloud native based solution provided by the Orange, which is outsourcing it on a pay as you grow model. So that's the four bricks of our value proposal. And I give, you, I give now the floor to Cedric to go in depth in the presentation of the four pillars of this value proposal. And I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Frederick. So now we will look how Orange can help you to solve the challenge, new challenges with 5G AC roaming, and especially on signaling and the, and the roaming hub offers. So there is new concept with the 5G, especially the 5G AC, which is a, the first one is a set, which is security endpoint, uh, GSMA standard, which needs operators to interconnect between the two with the ciphering interconnection. So, we will see that there could be some, let's say, challenges to implement this set, which is totally new compared to the regular 4G roaming. So there are multiple options to, to manage your SEP interconnection set. So it's security endpoint. So you have to manage all the encryption between the operators on every route you have. So if you are an operator, let's say operator one, and you want to open 5G MSA, 5G standalone roaming, you have to set up this interconnection with all the different operators. <coughs> so it's, a, it's a mess to manage because you have to manage all the certificates exchange between the different locations to update them because they have a limited validity and it could be quickly a nightmare to manage all your roaming agreement and you have to start from the beginning with all the operators worldwide. So this is anyway a possibility especially with your main roaming operator partners because uh, you can have some bilateral management. But if you want to develop and to go faster, you have to move to a carrier and a hubbing way. So the first model we can propose is a hosted set, which is all as an international carrier, so with the IPX provider, to propose a set endpoint. So it means that as an operator one, you just set up one single interconnection and the set, one single certificate management, and we are able to multiplicate with all the operators uh, as a hub and spoke model, which is simplifying a lot the management of the different interconnections and for you, for the operators to focus on the roaming agreement and commercials. The second benefit of this architecture is that by having a central point, we can access to the data within the, the, within the, the trunk, which is not possible in the first one, to provide value-added services, for instance, like steering of the roaming, like providing big data services or providing any operation of the signaling. So it's as secure as the first one. The only difference is that it's really, really easier to manage. And the third option, on top of this hosted set solution, we can propose also a roaming hub. We are already providing roaming up operation on 4G, on VoLT, on NB-IoT and all these kind of technologies, and 2G, 3G of course, and we are extending our roaming up facilities to the 5G standalone. So it means that thanks to the roaming up, on top of simplifying the management of the SEP and of the, of the security of the network, we also provide um, the BCO support and we also provide testing and billing between the different operators like a regular roaming app. 
So this is, it will be very interesting for two, um, two points. The first one, if you are already using roaming hub for 4G and 3G, you can continue to your relationship with the different roaming hub partners, thanks to the same roaming hub and do extend to the 5G coverage. And the second one is that when you are starting to set up all these new 5G agreement, it will take a long time because you have to negotiate with all the operators worldwide. And if you want to speed up the adoption and the interconnection, roaming hub is a good solution because you can outsource all the testing and the implementation of the roads, focusing on your commercial agreement. So another uh, new point with 5G is to reduce the latency because of the new use cases uh, uh, Frederick was talking about. You can have some use cases in roaming where you need a very, very low latency. So for instance, if you are providing roaming from Europe to Asia, and all the traffic is coming back to, to Europe to be treated uh, back and forth to be uh, uh, also sent back to Asia, it, it's not uh, the most efficient. So there is different approach which are uh, to uh, to simplify, uh, the, to exit the traffic as close as possible of the user uh, of the usage. For instance, if you have connected cars and you are chipping a, a SIM card from Europe and you send your connected cars in Asia, you don't want the traffic to come back to your uh, European operators who providing the SIM card into the cars. You want to have something uh, managed locally. So we are developing different uh, gateways option. So the traditional one is home routing. It will remain the, the classic model for uh, end users on your smartphone. Because when you have services on your smartphone, of course, the traffic will come back to your home network to be treated naturally as, as it is treated when you are in a domestic network with value-added services like firewall, security, or whatever. The second one will be the visited local breakout. So it's a breakout of the traffic directly on the visited operators. It's a solution, but it's not really optimized because you have to manage multiple policy management with any different visited uh, destination. So it's also complicated to manage because you have to manage one by one all the destination. So what we propose of relying on our new and um, virtualized uh, POP network is to propose regional breakout. So regional breakout is a big gateway located in the regions. So multiple big gateways located in the region to be able to catch the traffic when you are on the visitor network and to exit it locally in the region. So a region could be a country, a continent, or a subcontinent. Uh, each, everywhere it makes sense, we will put some P gateways exit regional breakout. We already did a press release last week uh, about, um, about this, and we have partnership with other carriers to be interconnected in different locations to be able to provide this regional breakout with different partners as well. So the last uh, proposal we are working on is that to outsource totally the four 5G code uh, with 5G core network as a service. So the, the opportunity here is to speed up the adoption of the 5G standalone, especially for operators who are not ready yet, who are small, uh, small operators who want to to have a pay-as-you-grow solution to enable 5G SA, rather than investing too much capex right now in, in core, dedicated core network, but to start with a core network as a service in the cloud. So we are in on the same um, virtual pops we, we use for the P gateways. We are able to host uh, some instance of a 5G core network. So the 5G core network are hosted in our network and you can develop your uh, antennas and your spectrum in 5G and interconnect with this 5G core network which will be multi-tenant and, and, um, and mutualized to lower the cost and to speed up the adoption and the implementation. Of course there is different components, some components will be in the core in, in, uh, in the country and some other components will remain in the country for regulatory issue for instance. So we are working on this to speed up the deployment on 5G to have a faster adoption, especially for networks who want to launch 5G as soon as possible without investing at the beginning. So the main benefit are to reduce the time to market for those operators, cost saving because you have a pay as you go model. You have the performance of orange networks worldwide. And as said, uh, Frederick and Jean Bernard, we are welcoming any operators who want to 
work with us on the proof of concept for lat to lat interconnection for the 5 GSA roaming. So we have our signaling platform with the hosted set as we proposed. And any operators who want to join us to work together on setting up new lat to lap interconnection to check everything on the technical level are welcome, of course. And uh, later on, we will also do the proof of concept with roaming up to implement as well the building features uh, with the PCA. Thank you very much.